Okay, hello and welcome to this NDTV special broadcast which is coming to you live from Mumbai from this wonderful bookstore in Bandra. Tidal Waves is the, is the name of the store. And we have with us as our guest today, Shashi Tharoor, uh, who's, as we know, running for the post of Congress president and uh, is now campaigning here in Mumbai because it's been now almost a week, I think, since Shashi Tharoor and uh, his main rival, Malik Arjun Kharge, filed their nomination. And they're out now hoping to get a majority of the, what, 9,000 odd delegates who actually make up the electoral college that is going to vote for the post of president. And putting questions to him is going to be some of Mumbai's sharpest minds. We have some key Mumbaikers here, influencers, as well as this wonderful audience uh, that's gathered here that is going to be holding Shashi Tharoor's feet to the fire. Uh, now, the question, of course, is that this is an internal election of the Congress. So why should there be a public engagement with it? And that's obviously because for the first time, after a very long time, it does appear as if the Congress, a national political party, is actually holding a contest, though some may question that. Uh, the other, of course, important question is that key to who wins could determine the fate of India's beleaguered leading opposition party. And that's the other big question we're going to explore tonight, that there may be change at the top of the Congress, but can it still be rescued? So Shashi Tharoor, thank you very much indeed. A round of applause, everybody, uh, for all of you as well. And uh, for Shashi Tharoor for Good to see you. Agreeing, agreeing to do this. Shashi Tharoor, now you're in the thick of it. When we last spoke, you were just about to file your nomination. At that time, you told me, and this is actually before Mr. Kharge's name was announced, you'd said very confidently that there is going to be no official candidate. Sonia Gandhi had promised you there is going to be no Gandhi-backed candidate. Now you're up against Malik Arjun Kharge who by all accounts very much seems like the official candidate. You're not asking me to doubt the word of my party president, are you? She well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm, going, I'm going by, you know, what was widely reported and accepted. No, look, that's surmise. I mean, the Gandhi family has made it very clear, not just to me, hmm. and indeed to the man who briefly considered a candidacy, Digvijay Singh, but also through the chief election authority, Mr. Mistri, she's had the press told that there is no official candidate, the Gandhi family is neutral in this race. And what is more, Mistri added that if anybody goes around saying otherwise, yes. it is not true. And he said it twice. Ye baat sahi nahi hai. He said it twice. I put the video out on YouTube, so I mean, on, on my social media. No, no, so the fact is, yes. I'm assuming that there is no official candidate. But you're right in your question that some people in the party yes. are implying otherwise and trying to influence voters with that theory. No, but are you saying that when you say that the Gandhi has assured you, the fact that Mr. Kharge was appointed at the last minute, he was asked to file his nomination, we are told that K.C. Venugopal, who is you know, very close to uh, the Gandhi family, Rahul Gandhi's key aide, he was the one who actually called and informed Mr. Kharge that he should contest. Are you still... I mean, look, Shashi Tharoor, public, as they say, public sab janti hai. This is not just you and me in the room. Uh, the public is here. Are you seriously going to sit here and say that he was not appointed with the full blessing of the Gandhis. I seriously have no choice but to take the word of my party president, the former president, the entire Gandhi family, okay. who said there's no official candidate and who have instructed the chief election officer of the Congress party to say mm. the same thing. Now, I'm not going to sit here disbelieving what I've been told. I'm prepared to believe that others, yes. even those you describe as close or whatever, yes. may have conveyed a different message, but this is not coming from them. You didn't feel at all disappointed or cheated when his name was announced, when Mr. Kharge's name was announced? Look, I have always expected that if there will be a senior leader in the race, mm. the establishment was bound to rally behind him. Okay. And that's, that's been apparent from the signatures collected on his nomination form, right. the people who accompanied him to submit it, mm. and now, of course, the behavior we've seen of party colleagues on the campaign trail where you find that wherever Mr. Kharge goes, yes. there are grandees of the Congress party greeting him, garlanding him, accompanying him, seating alongside him. Yes. Whereas wherever I go, there's ordinary karyakartas, genuinely uh, simple folks who haven't received uh, any such instruction to go and support the quote-unquote unofficial official candidate as you guys are describing. Who, who, no, no, when you be, you've now mentioned this almost three times, that there are people in the party who are sending that signal. Instructions are being sent. 
who are these people sending those instructions? How would I know? I'm not the one getting those instructions. But it's but, very clear you, from, but from you other people's comments. Yeah, I mean, but I'm you not, believe that those instructions are being sent? Let me just say that a, a lot of people in the party seem to believe it, and they tell me so. So mm. I have to understand you know, this old no smoke without fire kind of stuff. There is something going on, but with what degree of authority is the question? And my message to Congress party voters is, yes. number one, I have the word of the Gandhis. Number two, we have the collective word of the institution in the shape of the chief election authority. Yes. And number three, it's a secret ballot anyway. Well, you so don't. if you are told by a Neta you've got to vote this way, mm. he's not going to find out how you voted because there is a secret ballot. There's no indication on the ballot you, paper who you voted for. The ballot boxes are going to be sealed in front of the candidate's sure. agents, delivered in Delhi, but opened in front of the candidate's agents, and then mixed together before they're counted. So there isn't even a fear that people will know that there's a large number of votes for the bad guy well, from one state if, or if, the other, anything like that. If that were the case, like you yourself said, then you wouldn't have a problem getting people to rally behind you, unlike Mr. Kharge. You don't think, hold on, let me ask you, you don't think that these instructions, secret or otherwise, are coming from the Gandhis themselves? It's no, not Sonia Gandhi or Rahul behind this? I don't believe so. Listen, I mean, one of the obvious things we all have to face is… Is that being a bit naive? If Rahul Gandhi wanted to run the party, all he had to do was withdraw his letter of resignation. He was given a five-year term at the end of 2017, and he re resigned with only one and a half years into but you, it. But you can do it through proxy. You can do it through a candidate who… But, but, but let me ask you this. Is it true that Mr. Kharge asked you to stand down? Or, or, to, or to back his candidature and say, let's have not, a consensus. Not, not quite like that. When I called him to wish him well and, and say we'll have a friend, because he is not only a respected senior, he's also a friend. In fact, mm. just two months ago, I'd authored a rather fulsome tribute to him on his 80th birthday. So I want to make sure there's no hard feeling. This is, not, this is meant to be a friendly contest between colleagues yes. and not a bitter uh, battle between rivals. It's not that at all. And there's certainly no sort of enmity between us. So I called him to say, look, all the best. You know, I'm staying in the race and, and let's have a friendly contest. And on that occasion, what he said to me, and I can recall almost his exact words, were, mm. you know, I would have preferred a consensus, but I suppose that's not possible in a, in a democracy. It was words along those lines. He said and, that. And yeah. And so, you know, all I had to do was agree. I didn't actually have to say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not going to withdraw. Nor did he ever ask me, will you withdraw? That never happened. I know there's a paraphrase of this conversation. Yes, that, that, he, that you were asked to withdraw. I was never explicitly asked to withdraw, but frankly, if he had, I would have had to tell him, sorry, you know, a lot of people have stuck their neck out for me mm. in signing my number. We had 60 people, uh, many of whom have subsequently received calls from other grandees telling them, why did you do this, and so on. So if people are going to take their risks for me, mm. I will stick my neck out for them. So you at no point ever considered, <laughs> you point, at no point ever considered withdrawing? Absolutely not. And I've never run away from any challenge in my life, and I'm not okay. going to start now at this advanced stage. Before I start opening this up, you've mentioned these grandees several times. Name, it's precisely name, because name, uh, name the grandees. No, I'm not going to name any grandees. Listen, I have conducted my life Why not? my because politics no, no, without because actually… Time, time to name names. I've won three elections without insulting my opponents. I'm not going to start now insulting people who aren't even my opponents. So, oh. let me just say, okay. all I'm saying to you is that there are suppositions on the part of some people who tell me that they've come under some sort of pressure. And the fact is no, that it, it, nonetheless, a very large number of people who have found it impolitic to declare their views publicly have told me privately. Privately. That, yeah. Okay, because I was about to ask you, like, for example, when you, you've gone to Tamil Nadu, right, which I believe has close to, what, 900 delegates? Not that many, I think slightly, something more like Okay, but running into several seven, hundreds. Yeah, 700. But only about a dozen or less turned up to meet you. Well, I had the same story in Maharashtra. So, uh, but the fact is that it doesn't bother me because meeting people is not mm. the only way of seeking their vote. Okay. So I've spoken to dozens of times more people than have actually physically come to meet me. And on top of that, I've also got other means of reaching them. We've finally been given a list of phone numbers on Wednesday this week. And we're right. going to put them to good use and see anyone's on WhatsApp is going to get messages from me that way. And, and people, we're going to basically try and do whatever we can to ensure our message is reached. And very frankly, mm. one other way we're doing it is like this, is by the media. So when Srinivasan said, come and do a town hall, why not? Because ultimately, <laughs> we want the message to reach whoever will listen. And but these are not includes, Congress delegates, though. These are all no. band, Shashi Tharoor. I mean, uh, these are Bandra book lovers, uh, engaged hey, I'm a, uh, I'm audience a, I'm, citizenry. I'm a if, Kerala book lover, so you know. We, no, no. I'm saying if same, if, same guy. If, 
if book lovers had a had a say or had weight in this election, you'd win by a landslide. But you know, in, yeah, real, in, some in the media real world, polls, yeah. in real world, it's different. Let me start opening this up, though. Sanjay Jha is here. Uh, you know, he's your former colleague in the Congress. Sanjay Jha, yes. your question to this this point that Shashi Tharoor is saying that you know he doesn't believe that there is an official candidate. Uh, Kharge, you know, he wants to take the Gandhi's word for it. You wrote a very sharp piece today, where you clearly spelt it out that he is very much running against a quote-unquote official candidate. What, what is your response to this? Uh, the first real tragedy is that I don't have a vote because I'm suspended by the party. Otherwise, Dr. <laughs> Sashi Tharoor would have had one vote for sure. Thank uh, you, Sanjay. Uh, yeah. And if you support it, do give a big hand, right? Uh, the second point is I think Sashi's always been very dignified in his public uh, posture. And I do believe that, I don't think he's naive, but I think it'll be rather presumptuous to kind of assume that Mr. Kharge is going to be willing to debate with him if Sashi invites him for a debate. Sashi, would you do that? No, in fact, some journalist asked me this question and I immediately said, yes, I would. And then somebody asked Mr. Kharge and he fairly wisely, I think, said, our job is to debate the BJP, not each other, which is fine with me because certainly on issues involving the Congress party as a party versus the BJP, there's no question that he and I are on the same side. Yeah. Our principal difference, Sanjay, is very much this, that we have different approaches as to how to make the Congress fighting fit for the 21st uh, century yep. and for yep. the next election in 24. I believe that we need to bring back voters who didn't vote for us in 14 and 19. And therefore, I believe business as usual won't work. Whereas in many ways, therefore, the choice is between business as usual on the one hand right. and change parivartan on the yeah. other. No, no, yeah, but my sir, question, sir. no, but my point, Sanjay, was this, that yeah. you clearly spelled it out in your piece that Mr. Kharge very much was an officially picked candidate. I, I right? would repeat it publicly on your very popular show. I believe Mr. Kharge is the unofficial, official candidate backed by the establishment. By the establishment, meaning the Gandhis, very much well, by well, them, that is the establishment. Well, let me tell you, the only way that one can dispel that notion, I mean, uh, Sashi is correctly mentioned that when he met Mrs. Gandhi, yeah. she assured him that there is no official backing. But I think it, this cannot come through an interlocutor or through a private conversation. What stops Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, and I respect her enormously, yeah. or Rahul, from publicly making a statement saying that all the AICC delegates vote on your conscience. If that happens, I'm willing to believe this is an equal fight. But, but, but before you but answer that... a quick yeah. response to that? Yeah. I would welcome that, but I mean, it's not my place to tell other people what to say. Okay, but the fact that they're not doing it, indicating that perhaps, you not know... Not necessarily. That, there, there there know, is Mrs. A, there Mrs. Gandhi uh, very, rarely speaks, very rarely speaks directly to the press. Uh, and okay. one, one more statement before the others come in. Wait. Sashi, I mean, you and I have been pretty much on the same side in asking for reforms. But are you honestly disappointed? Because, you know, we are friends with everybody in the G23. Are you disappointed that forget supporting you, they have actually backed the candidature of Mr. Kharge? Look, my situation is very, I'm actually one of those who said there is no such thing as a G23. That label was given by the media. There were 23 people who happened to be in Delhi during the COVID lockdown. Out of 100 people, including you, who sympathize with these reform ideas, only 23 of us were available to sign, so we signed it. But no, there was no, but never an organization. I've never seen them all in the same room. Fair enough, but the I think the point, the point he's the point making, I'm making is however, that they were all those who were asking for change. I signed a letter which asked for very specific things, elections to the presidency yes. of the party, elections to the working committee, revival of the parliamentary yes. board, etc. Every one of the points in that letter is in my manifesto. So I have stuck to my thing. I have not changed my mind. No, no, but Those I, who have changed their mind and moved away from the demands of that letter to support the establishment candidate, yes. they can explain themselves. Don't ask me to explain them. No, no, not explain it. He's asking, are you disappointed by that? Who wouldn't be? Of course I am. But the fact is, that's neither here nor there. See, for me, any one vote is worth any other one vote. A big neta's one vote is equal to the vote of a karyakarta when it comes to adding no, no, the fair total. enough. But so I'm disappointed, but I'm not disheartened. I'm going on. Okay, but but that's an important point that you are disappointed in the role played by the G23 in this. Not let's the G23, go across, by those who by advocated those who, reform. Those who advocated reform. Along with me. Okay, let's go to someone who's in a sense uh, uh, again a former colleague of yours, but now across the aisle. This is Asif Bhamla. He's uh, both a BJP supporter and, of course, he runs the foundation here in Bandra. Asif Bhamla. Do you, do you believe that Shashi Tharoor is running a fair election? We'll get into whether the BJP runs fair elections. I'm not running an second. election. I'm running in an election. Running, on, running in an election. Thank you, Shashi Tharoor, uh, for correcting my English. 
do you believe that <laughs> do you believe that he's running in a fair election well, I'm here in, in the personal a, capacity. Or is the Congress running a, a sham election as, as the yeah. BJP claims? Let me, let me submit. I'm here in the personal capacity as a friend of Shashi's and we've been uh, friends in a very long time. He's been very active with my environmental endeavors in the past okay. and supported too many endeavors uh, with regards to air pollution. Right. And so there are just two pointed questions I have to ask. Uh, I've been hearing from the media that the party has unofficially been supporting. I, I, I'm not going to mix words. Uh, Sanjay Jha or maybe others may, uh, may, may think twice in, uh, in terms of asking, but I'm going to be blunt and I'm going to be asking you a pointed question. You've been loyal. You have given the party so much. Of course, the party has also given you, you are the minister, you've been consistently winning member of parliament's position and at times when it was difficult to win a parliamentarian, you yes. won for the party and you added to the kitty of the party. Now, after being so loyal, mm. a, a person like you who's been so suave, who's been uh, globally known, I mean, uh, you've represented uh, the international diaspora. What is the question? So why is, why, I, I, we hear from the media sources that the calls going to uh, to the, the DCCs, the PCCs to not, to back the uh, your opponent, I'm sorry, but do you think in a situation like that, is this a free and a fair election, number one? And number two, there is a question with regards to environment, which also I want to ask, which is also relevant about because... About the environment. Yeah, because we'll come that's to the environment to in a second. No, so no. That, is, that is one we'll question. We'll come to that in a second. No, I'm, I'm completing this question completely. And this is one part of the election. Uh, the second is that this is just 9,000 election. Post this, to, uh, we have 2024, the, the Lok Sabha election very coming soon. So how do you see that election also, so I re okay. require a reciprocation for both these pointed answers. Well, that, that's why I'm running. Thank I'm you. running because, as I said a little earlier, I don't think we can continue with business as usual. I think we need to have not only changes within the party and within the way the party functions, which is the burden of my song to my colleagues, but it's also necessary through that to demonstrate to the outside public that we are a newly revived, newly invigorated party that has a claim on their votes. There are a lot of people who've been shifting away from us. If you look at our voting percentage in 2009 and then 14 and 19, in 14 and 19, we just got 19% each. We had 26 the, the previous time. The question is, these people who went away from us, can we bring them back? What drove them away from us? Maybe some of the same things that prompted some senior leaders to leave us. Now, if the leaders are losing faith in us, we have to demonstrate a certain capacity to renew our own faith in ourselves. Mm. And changing within the party is one way of conveying that. So I am contesting for that purpose. On the first part of your question, I've answered it. The secret ballot is ultimately the final refuge. But are the calls going to PCCs and so on? As he's, as we he's could see. We saw a huge welcome here. We I saw a huge welcome here for uh, Mr. Second. Karge in Mumbai. That, by, yeah, that's, truck that's loads of workers and, uh, and, uh, and senior office bearers. So why not? I mean, when you've met so, the, the high command, okay, I, okay, I think they should yeah. endorse. No, it, it is true that in four states that I've been in so far, there's been a vast difference between the way in which Mr. Karge was received by the office bearers of the party and the way in which I was received by ordinary folks or lower office bearers or just karyakartas of the party. And I am fine with that, but obviously it's led some people to surmise, okay. as Asif said, that some are official, unofficial or whatever. And the truth is, from my point of view, yeah. I can't say that that gives me a level playing field, but as a cricket fan, I can say, you know, you're playing a game of cricket, you've got to accept the pitch you're given. Right. And there's no point complaining that the pitch Please. is got uneven bounce okay, to the but, other side. Can you but leave aside the, the suggestion that Mr. Kharge may be the official or not official candidate. What would you say is the reason that somebody should vote for you over Mr. Kharge? Because on his own merits, somebody may turn around and say, Mr. Kharge is a senior season politician. Absolutely. He's been a nine or ten time MLA. That's He's right. leader of opposition. Absolutely. He's been in the Congress much longer than you. Why vote for Shashi Tharoor and not Malik Arjun Kharge. Because I represent something new and different. Uh, Mr. Kharge is very much a very senior member of our existing leadership establishment. And so I would say to people, if you're happy with the way things are going in the party and the way the party is being run, he is absolutely the right man for you because he is very much part of that top. If anyone would ask, name you the You think three, Mr. Kharge is not going to change the three top anything. leaders, three top leaders in the party beyond the Gandhis, anyone's list would include Mr. Kharge. So he's a very senior man already. If he wanted to bring about change, he's already got the capacity to have done it. I don't see any evidence of any changes having come since his assumption of his most recent okay, position. Okay, so you're saying 
Mr. Kharge is is unlikely to bring about Look, major I, change within the Congress. I basically put my feet where my mouth was because I've been advocating these changes, okay. not just in the so-called G23 letter, but in articles I've written before that. So I'm just saying just, just I've been an advocate for reform. And okay, okay. One second. No, no, no. Second. Think, think, is this a free and fair election, Sashi? That's all I want to ask. I, I'm expecting Do you see this as a free one? and fair election? I, I, I will give a definitive sort of comment on that only after the whole thing is over. Right now, there are certainly aspects that imply an uneven playing field. Okay. And we're going to try and get them attended to by the chief election. What authority. would you say, and this question is not going to go away, I'm going to come to Sudeen Kulkarni also on this. What would you say to the other question that always will continue to surround you? That there is this perception. We are in a bookstore, which is in a sense your natural habitat. It is. And, yeah. and, the, and the perception is that you represent a different kind of political reality. You're seen as part of the Lachian's elite. Uh, we see just, I mean, even in the past 48 hours, I've seen, I think you've launched, you've been to two book launches. You've spoken, I think, at some forum on democracy. You've given a lecture on human rights. Uh, is this a realistic profile for somebody to take on the BJP Modi juggernaut? Well, I think you, you know, if it shows that somebody is capable of thinking and expressing ideas, that would be considered an asset in any country's politics, particularly that of a democracy. No, no, because but in, this, in, in the Indian political area, I mean, you do not see Amit Shah and J.P. Nadda at Jaipur Lit Fest. So, <laughs> so I mean... So, I'm broadening the base of the party, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm broadening the base of the party to include people voting for us okay. who go to the Jaipur Lit Fest. Seriously, why not? I mean, the point is, we, okay. need, to bring, we, we need to bring in new voters. Vasu, seriously. If we, if we can't get the new voters from those who we consider traditionally the Congress voters, yeah. because they seem to have plateaued at 19% in two elections, yeah. where is another 7-8% going to come from for us to be able to get no, a but, critical mass of seats? But fair enough, but We've got to get them from outside. No, but one of the things about the BJP playbook is that they're 24 by 7. That's all they do. There's no other distractions yeah, I'll take and diversions. Book, I'll take a break from book writing and I will continue. No, no, I don't but want you to. I'm not asking you to <laughs> take a stop from book writing or going to Litfest. I'm asking, will you? No, going to Litfest is reaching an audience. I should go. Oh, I see. But okay. writing <laughs> means shutting myself off alone in a room with a computer. That I should stop doing okay. as long as I'm president. To this point about this perception of Shashi Tharoor as this sort of you know, elitist figure delinked from the hurly-burly of Indian politics, whether he can actually be Look, someone who can lead the Congress. Look, I won three elections. Vasu, I won three Lok Sabha elections. No, and no, I sir. won them in a constituency with fisher folk, with Adivasis, with farmers. Fair enough. Not just city dwellers. Okay? No, no, that's what I'm saying. So I'm, give I'm, me a break. No, no, no. Let, it's a question. It's a question. I'm not saying... I that only got to Lutyens, Delhi because these poor farmers and fisher folk put me there. Okay, fine. You know, to call him elitist is a slur. Thank on you, On scholarly leaders. Okay. And we need more and more such scholarly leaders in every party. All right, okay. But let me begin by wholeheartedly congratulating you, Shashi Ji. Thank you, Sudeen. You have made uh, the presidential election a truly democratic election. You're going to lose. Thank you. <laughs> For the vote but of not, confidence. But not all battles are fought to win. <laughs> Even in defeat, some battles lead to victory. And your well, battle is going to lead to democratization of the Congress party. One sec, you've already declared that he's going to lose, though. That is clear. Yeah. Shashi Tharoor, anyway, you come back. But what is your question to him? My sir? question, my, I have two questions. Yes. What are your thoughts on revitalizing the Congress party in a way that it becomes family mukt? Because I strongly believe that unless the Congress party comes out of the control of one family, it is not going to be revitalized, not going to be strengthened. And unless the Congress gets stronger, democracy cannot be saved, secularism cannot be saved, India cannot be saved. Okay, can I, so can I get him to answer the first question? No, no, I'll come back to you for the second, one at a time. How will you ensure the Congress is made family? And I'm saying this. I'm saying this, even though I'm a huge admirer of Rahul Gandhi, I support Bharat Jodo Yatra. So okay. do I. So do I. And I think the answer is I won't be attempting to do that for a simple reason. So then the fact is that the DNA of the Congress Party and the blood of the Gandhi Nehru's for the last hundred years has been inextricably intertwined, and there probably isn't a Congress worker, or there are very few who don't absolutely feel a total commitment to the Gandhi family. So 
it would be foolish on the part of a president who wants to run the Congress party to try and distance himself from the Gandhis or distance them from the party. That would be absolutely foolish. You're quite right that the Bharat Jodo Yatra has been a great success. And as a result, it has actually attracted people. Even if those people were already well inclined to the Congress so far, they've been energized anew by seeing Rahul Gandhi trudging those kilometers, day in and day out, 22, 25 kilometers every day. I've been with him in Kanyakumari and in three days in Kerala. And I can tell you on those three days, I saw people from 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning lining the streets to cheer him and so on. Oceans of people. I'm not just talking. The, I mean, it's not a rent okay. mob. These are spontaneous supporters. So he has made an invaluable contribution to the Congress party through the Bharat Jodha Yatra. The presidential election is over on the 19th of October. His march goes on till next year. And as far as I'm concerned, more power to him. Let him continue. And if I'm elected, I'll be happy to go and sort of walk alongside him once so more before returning to my duties at some so point. So you're saying? Because I'm saying that he can be a great asset to the so new you, president. But essentially, you're saying you then cannot make the Congress family or the Gandhi mukt. I'm just saying it's not necessary, it's not okay. needed, and it's not welcome to the party's uh, workers. Okay. I'm, Sudhi, I'm, I know you have a second question. I'm coming back to you in a second. But I do want to ask you about about this idea of, it's not just about whether he can galvanize the party or not, but were you to become president, though Sudhin Kulkarni has said that you're not going to win, I must say that was quite uh, quite blunt, blunt of him. Quite blunt. <laughs> okay. But were you to win, what if the Gandhis attempt to do backseat driving? What will you do? No, look, I mean, Rahul Gandhi's answered that before I need to. Just yesterday in a press conference, he said, We've got two people of stature contesting the election. It's an insult to them to suggest that either of them could be remote controlled. I think that's the answer. Uh, he's not going to attempt to using a remote control when he has... And you, and you take... You, I mean, I, with, I, with all respect, you take all of this at face value. I mean, you, you know, you're, well, you, you've been in politics. Why are you, you taking at face value this claim that I'm an elitist? What is my elitism? Okay, I don't I, come from a rich party. I'm no, not I'm saying sorry. you're elitist. I don't come I'm from a rich family. My father was a salaried professional. Okay. He taught me the virtue of education. And everything I've achieved in my life has been entirely on my own okay, merit, but I, including scholarships to study okay, abroad. Fair enough. Okay, I'm just telling you, if they are talking about elitism of merit, I'll claim guilty. But this kind of elitism... Are, I mean, I'm not some sort of, you know, uh, rich fat cat plutocrat who's trying to buy the party. Not at all. And I don't think that was a suggestion either. But coming back to this point of, of Bharat Jodo and whether the Congress has an appetite to fight the BJP, just take the Yatra as an example. You're doing this Yatra, I believe it's 3,000, 4,000 kilometers. It is not going through Gujarat. Gujarat goes to polls in just a month or two. You're completely bypassing it. You're barely touching Uttar Pradesh, which is a politically important state. Doesn't this once again reflect the problem with the Congress? That you're, it's one thing to make the grand, sim, you know, the grand gesture, but you have a real life, you know, life or death election, and you're completely bypassed well, I, it. I think we will be campaigning with vigor, certainly if I have anything to do with it, in, in both those states when the time comes, and certainly Gujarat, we haven't had dates. But, but, but is it a mistake? No, but is it a mistake to bypass Gujarat? The Yatra should Look, have gone to Gujarat, you think? Well, yes and no. I'll tell you the pro and con. The pro is yes. We would get the publicity and attention and so on. The con is, it could be a distraction from the regular routine grunge work of campaigning in every constituency. What can be a better, better campaign pitch for the Congress than to lead this Rahul Gandhi leading this huge yatra well, through the it, state? It's, you think? Not, it's not impossible that he could divert in some way for a short while. But let me also stress that when this thing was conceived, the great symbolic value of Kanyakumari to Kashmir was what yeah. was decided upon. And Gujarat is not necessarily on the easiest route going straight from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. But I take your point. I, certainly, we will be campaigning in, in, in Gujarat. Don't get me wrong. We will be. If you, will. if you become president, will you ask the Bharat Jodo to go through Gujarat? Will you do a, a little bit of itinerary If we can't move the entire shifting? yatra, we can certainly have a sub yatra or something like okay. that. Let's see. And I believe that the party has said that they're not ruling out the possibility of a west-to-east yatra okay. to complement the south-to-north south to yatra. Okay. Also joining us, uh, because this is Bombay, remember, and, and you know, uh, this, the world of uh, corporate India is never far from us. We have with us Baman Mehta. Uh, he is Dara Shaw, one of the founders of Dara Shaw Associates, financial consultant. Great to have you. Looking more like a neta uh, rather than a corporate honcho, uh, Baman. But uh, do you... I'm yeah. wearing my BJP clothes. Your BJP clothes, are you with the BJP now? Is this something that we should know about? Or your You'll have to ask Shashri. Well, I mean, he, 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 he wasn't inclined that way the last time I knew him, but who knows, anything is possible. Okay. So do you think that Shashi Tharoor is somebody who can actually, were he to win, take on the BJP? Well, 
Uh, I and, oh, sorry, what's your question to Shashi Tharoor? Rather? Let me not put words in your mouth. Yeah. As I said, Shashi had a few questions to ask, more like rapid fire than oh my giving you my points of view on the world. So, uh, yes, no, or a maybe, because the world isn't always black and white. So, rapid fire is you ask the question, he answers, and back and forth. Absolutely. Yeah? yeah? Okay. So, the first one is, how significant is it that both candidates are from south of the Vindhyas? Look, I think it's, you know, we should stop seeing it in these binary terms. The honest truth is, no one would have commented if both candidates were from North India. Why is it so unusual there should be someone from the South? We've had five presidents from the South in the last 50 years. We Let's have one more. Good for the party, good for the country. Two, for, you as a, for you as a candidate and the type of writings that you've done, etc., especially against the empire, do you think that you will be able to undercut the BJP plank of nationalism and therefore reorient the discussion? Yeah, actually, I've been bizarre. I mean, I find it bizarre that the BJP has a plank of nationalism when nobody in their heritage has contributed to the nationalist struggle. Yeah. The Congress party did, the Congress movement. Okay. And those of the Hindutva persuasion were totally absent from the freedom struggle. Awesome. How did they become nationalist? Where did this come from? My next Explain question... To be Hindu nationalist and not Indian nationalist is another conversation. The next question that I have is, what is it that Shashi Tharoor would provide in terms of vision, direction, and leadership, as compared to a Gandhi. I thought this is rapid fire. This, these are sort of, you know, I'll, deep, I'll, far I'll, deep, yeah, deep, like deep questions. Well, I mean, the, the short answer, since we're in a bookshop, is it's all there in all my books. <laughs> I've really described my vision at some length. But the essential issue right now uh, is that we are talking about an internal election, and I have put forward a manifesto for change within the party. So one of my main messages is, I want to decentralize our high command culture. I want to empower the grassroots of the party from the lowest levels to the state chiefs. Right now, for example, even a district president can't be appointed without the signature of yeah. the Congress president in Delhi. I'm going to change all that. I'm going to also democratize the party by restoring provisions which exist in our constitution okay. that have not been applied, like elections to the working committee and, 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 uh, and other bodies in the party, that sort of thing. Okay. So it's more about re-energizing the party by empowering Congress workers at all levels. So okay, let me just, uh, I, I need to move on because there's the audience as well. But let me just, before I go to the audience, uh, Sudhin Kulkarni also has a follow-up. I do want to ask you because you were telling me this in our conversation as well about how you want to decentralize. But Shashi, so many of the biggest challenges or battles before the Congress is mediating between these warring satraps. Virtually in every state, it's Pilot versus Gehlot in Rajasthan. In Chhattisgarh, you have two satraps. In Karnataka, you have D.K. Shivkumar and Siddharamaya. How will you, if you were to win, I mean, how can the high command turn around? I mean, those, won't that require high command mediation? And, and why would they want to, and not to be rude, but why would they listen to a Shashi Tharoor? Because at times it appears they don't even listen to Sonia Rao Gandhi. Look, my approach is actually to not just decentralize, but also to empower at the bottom. So, for example, my core principle will be we should have very effective screening of candidates, including consulting people at the bottom levels as to who should represent them as their voices. No, and but I'm once the candidates are elected, yeah. as MLAs, for example, they get to elect their own leader. We send an observer from the state just to get a secret ballot done, mm. find out whom the MLAs want. Okay. So that's how most parliamentary democracies work. I mean, the whole parliamentary system rests on the leader having the support of a legislative majority. So why is it that we have abandoned that, and we now have both in the BJP and in other parties, right. we have somebody sitting in Delhi telling people who's going to lead them when they actually should be finding their own leader? Okay. Um, let me, let, uh, Sudin, quick uh, uh, interjection from you, and then we'll go to audience. Yes. You know, a much bigger battle is coming in 2024. And you rightly said that the Congress vote share has uh, come down drastically. Do you think that in order to get back that vote share, in fact, increase it further in order to defeat the BJP under Modi and Amit Shah, it's necessary for the Congress to win back the hearts and minds of the Hindu community. I see a book here, Why I Am a Hindu, authored by you. Anyone who talks of Hindu concerns, even legitimate concerns of Hindu community, is branded as advocating soft Hindutva. So what are your views on winning back the hearts and minds of the majority community in India for the Congress. Well, uh, what my book sought to do was to remind Hindus of what their faith is supposed to be all about. I'm, I'm very much somebody who's a, a Bhakta Swami Vivekanand since my, my, my college days. And having read pretty much everything he's written or spoken, 
his vision of Hinduism is something that I, and I believe most Hindus in India have actually grown up with and are comfortable with, which is a religion that teaches not just tolerance but acceptance, that says, you know, I have my idea of the truth, you have your idea of the truth, I will respect your truth, please respect my truth, which is by far the most sensible prescription in a multi-religious country like ours. Now, Sudin, the fact is that Hinduism, as I understand it, has nothing to do with Hindutva as propagated by the, the ruling party and their minions, who have reduced the soaring majesty of our philosophical texts, our Upanishads and so on, right. into something like the team identity of the British football hooligan. You know, you don't back my team, I'm going to hit you on the head. That's not Hinduism. Okay. And let me remind you that in a country of 80% Hindus, the BJP's highest vote share has been 37%. That is not even if every single person who voted for them was a Hindu, that would not even be half the Hindu population. Okay. So we uh, are standing up for broad-minded Hindus who accept that other people have a right to be different. Okay, let's, let's uh, open it up for audience questions. Uh, please put up your hand if you want to ask a question. And my request is, we are asking or seeking questions, not statements, and keep them as short as possible. Yes, can we have uh, the gentleman over there in the middle with the check shirt? Yes. Yes. Sir, congratulations once again. Thank you. And, um, uh, you know, the bigger question, like it, it was mentioned many times, uh, whether you're going to be the president of the Congress party or not, I think even in that choice is going to be, what is going to be your strategy in improving the chances for Congress in the 2024 elections, right? And I think it is uh, uh, common knowledge that alliances are going to become a very important part of that and everybody who's going to vote for you in this election, somewhere in their mind is going to think about, you know, what is your strategy to strengthen some alliances to make the party stand stronger? Okay. So could you brief us on that? Yeah, I mean, the fact is that I've been writing about this since 2014 when we first had a crushing defeat in the general, uh, general elections, which is that we have to strike the balance between protecting our own interests as a political party and looking at the larger picture of what will win the general election. And the truth is that Last time, Mr. Modi won with 37% of the vote, which means 63% of the country went the other way. But the other way happened to be divided amongst 46 parties. Some have one member, two members, and so on in parliament, and some have no member in parliament, but they took the vote. And what we need to do, therefore, is to minimize the damage that causes. If a national level Mahagat Bandhan or UPA3 is not possible, then do state level alliances and start talking now. We've got one and a half years to go. We really have to try and identify elements of a common minimum program we can all agree on. Right. We have to understand what sacrifices each side is prepared to make, because there'll have to be some sort of tough swallowing of egos in every place. But we'll have to do some of that. At the same time, a Congress president's duty is principally to the Congress party and Congress workers. You can't relinquish their fair rights to have a crack at a, at, at, at a seat that they believe they can win if their belief is well-founded and not irrational. So we've okay. got to look at things like previous election patterns, where the support base would be, et cetera. Use professional election management techniques. Yes. I mentioned this in my manifesto. And then decide which we can afford to sacrifice and which we have to fight to keep. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, there's a lady over there, please. Can we have the mic across to her? Yes. Hi, good evening. Um, I have a very similar question to before uh, with regard to how you're going to make the Hindu vote. How are you going to make the Hindu vo uh, the vote of the young people? India is a very young country, and especially given that you're quite a bit younger than your opponent. <laughs> I'm not at all young enough to speak for them, so what I want to do is ensure they have a chance to speak for themselves. Young I recommend at heart. It, huh? You're young at heart. You're gonna I'm young at heart. <laughs> Absolutely young at heart. I le I let me tell you that I have even advocated that we should consider moving a constitutional amendment to reserve a certain number of seats for people under 30. Because at the moment, our country is 25, people under 25 are 51% of the population. And people under 35 are 65% of the population. It is Young India already, and I want to be, I want Congress to be the party of Young India. Okay. Secondly, the young should have a chance to speak for themselves and tell us what they want. It's very obvious from my perspective that we've got to do much more on educational opportunities, skill development, and job creation, because you can't afford to have unemployed young people idling around not knowing where their future is coming from. So okay. that becomes a priority. But we also need to have much more youth representation. All right, okay. Uh, let's get the mic across to uh, that gentleman over there. Yes. 
Good evening. First of all, I would like to uh, best of luck for the for the presidential election. But uh, I sincerely hope that some miracle happens in Congress and you win. But God forbid, <laughs> suppose Sudhir you lose. Is for that. So, <laughs> but suppose you lose, which is uh, one of the chance. So, what will happen the, to the Congress? As I understand, the status quo will remain say, there. And what will be your role? What will we gain? Well, if I lose, I won't get much of a say in determining what my role will yeah, be. Then, the new party leadership will have to decide that. But I will say answer, yeah. that whoever wins or whoever loses, and I've said this before, if Mr. Kharge wins or Shashi Tharoor wins, it doesn't matter as much as the fact that the Congress party must win. And the Congress party's victory has got to be something which involves both of us working together, whoever wins, and which involves all sections of opinion. Of course, if I get some trivial vote, then the section of opinion backing me will not matter. But if enough people demonstrate, I'm still talking about the scenario that you're painting that I will lose. If I were to lose, then I would say that those who voted for me are all people who are hardworking members of the party, and that's why their delegates were entitled to vote. They represent a voice that the party must heed. So I will continue batting for them, batting for increased consultative mechanisms in the party right. so that we can open up the party as much as possible. Mr. Kharge hasn't yet released a manifesto, so I don't know if he agrees with all or many or any of my suggestions. But I would certainly try and pursue these in as constructive a way as possible. I'm not interested. I mean, I am trying to lead the party, not to divide it. Okay, I, so I'm interested in conciliation and progress and trying to get us all sections of opinion in the party moving in the right direction. Okay, Otherwise, but, but, frankly, we'll be toast again. Okay, so, so if you lose you will stick around in the Congress. I mean, you're not as going As long anywhere. as the Congress wants me to stick around, sure. Okay, but again, we are now in the, as I say, the court of public opinion. Did you ever contemplate, like many of your contemporaries did, to quit the Congress at no, some I mean, point? The entire point is, yeah, it was widely rumored and not entirely inaccurately that lots of parties had approached me. But the very fact that I'm still here yes. shows that I've been impervious to other people's blandishments. I have basically been somebody who hmm. clearly people think has something to offer politically and has a constituency that could be brought into vote for whichever party will have me. And if people felt, for whatever reason, yes. that I was being underused in the Congress, they said, why can't we use him instead? So they came to me. Who? Who not, all? I'm you're approached to, by what? No one repeats private conversations on primetime television. I mean, you, you, you shared part of it saying that you were approached, which uh, no, managed to sort of enter the public domain. Everyone knows I was approached because some of the people who approached me have themselves said it. Let them speak for themselves. Okay. I don't betray private conversations. All I can say is, I have basically been impervious to these approaches and I have stayed in the party and I'm Why? fighting to lead the party for the better. Of the Why is that? Why did you decide not to jump ship like many others did? Old-fashioned loyalty is part of it. But it's also because, frankly, I have an ideological affinity hmm. <coughs> with the Congress party that really matters to me. Okay. In the sense that, though my political principles have been articulated and written about way before I joined politics. So right. I didn't get my convictions from the Congress party. The convictions I brought to the Congress were entirely congruent with the principles and values of the party. Okay, so you're saying you're not, regardless of win or lose, you're not going anywhere. We're very short on time. Let's just take a, a, a few more questions. Uh, yeah, let's go to the back over there, gentleman in the pink shirt. Two, two questions. Uh, well, only time short. for one. Yes. Oh, no. Okay, fine. So one thing is, what's your stand on overall economic situation of the country? Do you have an agenda? Do you have a policy? And I yeah. have to ask the second one, when will you be writing such a fantastic fiction again? <laughs> <laughs> Thank on you. economic, I want to ask you, because again, we're in Mumbai. And it's true that at times, the Congress does appear to be sending mixed signals. You have this constant kind of almost, uh, I don't want to use the word tirade, but there's a lot of strong rhetoric against this Adani, Ambani kind of corporatization, right? We hear that all the time from the Congress. And then you see there is Gautam Arani sharing the stage with Ashok Gehlot just yesterday at a Rajasthan summit. And there was this whole question of, will the real Congress stand up? No, but that is part of the real Congress. The real Congress says, and Mr. Gehlot said it, that if somebody is willing to come and invest in my state and create jobs and bring up revenue in my state, of course I want him. And that was my attitude when Mr. Arani bid for uh, the William Port and the Trivandrum Airport. If he wins a bid fair and square, we should cooperate with him. And that's certainly what happened in my own constituency. And I know I'm being pilloried for it. Look, I am somebody who, within the Congress party, 
has very much welcomed the liberalization of 1991. I'm prepared to stand behind it. I'm very much in favor of business in our country being mm. not being as over-regulated as they are in our country right now. But at the same time, I want the revenues coming from this to be available to the government to distribute to those who are marginalized or left out sure. of the economic... No, no, but I mean, what about this constant, uh, you know, Adani Ambani's control, this government rhetoric, I'm which comes allergic, from the Congress? I'm not allergic to Adani Ambani's or any other Anis who are willing to serve the interests of the people of my country okay. by, by investing in my country, generating jobs in my country for Indians. But the wider allegation that the Congress seems to be making, that there's a kind of concentration of business power, that there are these oligarchies that have come up, right? Very aligned with the current regime. Do so, you subscribe to that view? No, we are talking about the need for a level playing field and therefore obviously we're not fans of what's being called crony capitalism. Uh, I don't have any grouse with any particular individual, okay. but I would like a system where everyone knows what the rules of the game are and anybody is free to compete. Okay. And that's how the, 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 the best economies have always functioned. We should make ours one of the better economies in that respect. Okay. But I'm not, for example, somebody who's anxious to rush off nationalize, nationalizing everything or, or reversing privatization and willing to live with that. Okay, we're, we're, I think uh, we're just, I, I'm going to ask my producer if I can take one more question. And we can take one more question. Yes, gentlemen here in the front, let's keep it super brief. So very young kid in the middle. Okay, let's take, no, actually, let's I take beg both. your pardon. Let's take both. Let's, I, I, I know this young man, I'm not going to deprive uh, uh, Well, in that case, then, <laughs> if you know the young man. No, 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 come on, Rusin, Okay, okay, okay. Good. Oh, just a quick statement first that uh, I, I question, think question, there's no, there's time no for shame statements. in going to the Jaipur Lit Fest because as a young professional myself, I've seen the amount of apolitical professionals Dr. Tharoor has brought into the fold of the Congress party under the All India Professional Congress. Okay. My, my question is, Dr. Tharoor, um, you represent something new for the Congress party. And this election is strange because when I academically analyze the constitution of the Congress party, a lot of the delegates are themselves elected by the establishment or chosen dire directly or indirectly by the establishment. So if you represent something new, what is the incentive for these delegates chosen by the establishment to actually uh, vote for you? And won't they fear, and, and yourself as well, fear some blowback from the party? Many of them are tired of losing. It's as simple as that. And, and many of them have said to me, even though they are all handpicked, as you said, by the establishment, that while some of the seniors have rallied behind the establishment, they say that they want me because they feel I represent the hope for real change but it, uh, that will reverse the results of the last But agenda. is there a fear of reprisals for them? As he said, like, that voting for you or aligning with you, could there be reprisals? I, you know, I, I'd like to think not. If the Congress goes that way, it'll be doing itself a disservice. Okay, fine. Yes, young man over here. Sorry, you've been hands up for a long time. Uh, my question is slightly deviates from the current, but I wanted to ask, you spoke that Congress had instituted rank choice voting for the presidential elections. Were you all influenced by pre country, I mean, countries and states like Alaska and Brazil t employing rank choice voting in their elections? Or why did you choose that instead of single transferable well, vote or something like the truth that? Is we didn't choose it, it's written in the constitution. It's written in the constitution that Congress voters will have to vote with ranked choice voting if there's more than two candidates. Okay. There was an attempted candidacy by a third person. His papers were disqualified for whatever reason. Had he survived, then Congress voters would have had to go and write one, two against the three names. And then the person who came third, his votes, the first preference of that would have been counted. Okay. So the idea was that whoever happened should have an absolute majority. There are only two candidates and automatically by default, one person will get a majority. But if there are three candidates, they don't want what happens in the general elections to happen, which is that you can win with, say, 37% because somebody else has 35, but the guy who had 35 may have actually won if the chap who came third, his second preferences had come to him. So that's, in India, we have that's a system which is first past the post, inherited right. from the British, which in many ways is less fair than the system the Congress okay. Party has so, written into its own constitution. Which, as you said, is, is written into the constitution. So my literally the final question to you, Shashir, you're saying that your entire attempt is to get the Congress battle ready, especially for 2024. But many believe That's right. 2024 is a done deal. It's not. It's not for all. It's not a done deal? No, absolutely. You think the BJP, Mr. Modi, are not but coming back? They're in pole position. But I think that we can get, first of all, by showing, because people are unhappy. You know, you've had demonetization. But they are in pole position. You at least can see had, that. In, uh, you've had the worst unemployment figures ever recorded since numbers started being kept. You've had very high inflation. You had the depreciation of the rupee, the collapse nearly of the rupee. And you've seen a lot of people who voted for Mr. Modi eight years ago because they thought they'll get a job. 
finding they still don't have a job. Why would they vote for him again? One of the reasons that Mr. Why are Modi's, they in poll position then though? Because people seem to think that there isn't a strong enough viable alternative. The purpose of my entering this race is to demonstrate that the Congress party can strengthen itself mm. through its own internal self-correcting mechanisms mm. to demonstrate the strength to take on the BJP. That's what this is all about. If we can to strength, renew ourselves… Is it a demonstration of strength or will it actually be a defeat? I mean, are you, are you saying that you can actually… Defeat the BJP yeah. or is this going to be a show of strength, no, no, like a kind of moral victory? Once we are strong enough, yeah. so that people start believing in us again, they'll right. come back and vote for us and then we'll defeat the BJP. You will defeat the bet in 2024 or in 2020? I mean, 2024. 2024. One and a half years is, okay. is, is the home stretch we need to All get right, that okay. defeat. Well, Shashi Tharoor… Uh, Provided, of course, that those of us who believe in this okay. get a chance to implement our beliefs. Okay. Anyway, you seem, as I said, very determined to go through with this election, like Absolutely. you said. Uh, you know, it's interesting because many people actually have… Like, if you look at Ashok Gehlot, he virtually, I mean, is alleged to have staged a coup to not become Congress president. Normally, it's the other way around. You stage a coup to become <laughs> a leader. <laughs> You're allegedly staging one not to become. But you are very much committed no to comment, this. No comment. Yeah. No comments. No, no comment. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, already no, I'm, spoken I'm like a I'm potential. Com committed to having a crack because yes, I do represent something different in the party. Okay. As you yourself said, I do represent the ability to reach out to constituencies that have not voted for us, right. or not for a while anyway. Okay. And if we can try and bring them in, we might yet surprise the world. All right. Well, all the very best, Shashi Tharoor, and thank you very much for doing this. And thank you very much for our audience and all our panelists for joining us. Let's have a round of applause. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks, everyone, indeed. for your questions as thank well. You. Much appreciated. Thank you.